What is going on guys? Grave here today. I want to do an updated best console settings for the Elder Scrolls Online. This is going to be a really long de uh, detailed video. I'm going to go into kind of detail about all the settings in game. So you, anybody out there that's new or you know a veteran player can get the best settings possible for consoles. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. First of all, let's look at video settings. Now, if you're on new gen console, you will see this graphics option. Performance is 60 FPS with lower graphics. Fidelity is 30 FPS with higher graphics. I prefer to play in 60 FPS, so that's why I have it on performance. Also, in Fidelity, if you're playing Dungeons, Trials, PvP, a lot of abilities and things are going off, you'll see your frame start to drop, so that's another reason I like to have performance on. But if you want to run around and just do story quests, Fidelity is really nice to see some of those really cool graphics in game, especially on new gen consoles. When it comes to brightness, I have mine turned up kind of bright. This is personal preference. I play on a 24 inch LG gaming monitor. I like to have the game a bit brighter. There's a lot of dark areas, but it's going to depend on your monitor or TV to how bright you really want it. When it comes to the screen size, mine's knocked down just a bit. I prefer to have the screen a bit smaller. That way things like, you know, you can see your journal up here. Things don't bleed off the screen. Uh, sometimes if you have that screen way too wide, things will kind of pull and drag off the screen. You won't be able to read all of the information. When it comes to custom scale, I have this set to own. And I have this two ticks from the right, far right. The further you go right, the larger the words and the interface is. The, sm the further you go to the left, the smaller they're going to be. So this is going to affect all things from your chat bar to your size of your abilities on your screen. Everything is going to be larger or smaller depending on how high you have that custom scale. So keep that in mind. When it comes to screenshot mode, this is just to hide things if you actually want to take screenshots in game. For audio, all personal preference. This is whatever you like. Nothing here that's really going to, you know, make or break the way the game performs or plays or looks. When it comes to gameplay, I use template A. Um, I used to use a PlayStation back button when I had a PS4. Uh, when I played on PS4 before I got my PS5. Personally, that's the best thing. A PlayStation back button, a, a controller like a Scuff, Battle Beaver, um, any of the other controllers you can get, Xbox Elite controllers. If you can have the option, if you have the option to purchase something that has a back button on it, it makes bar swapping a hundred times easier. And when I bought my PS5, of course, the PlayStation back button does not work with the PS5, the one from PS4. So I was kind of disappointed in that because I hate bar swapping with the directional pad. Now you do have another option. You can go into your console and to your accessibility settings on your Xbox or your PlayStation and actually use custom button mapping on your console. Now, keep in mind, if you do that, a lot of players like that. A lot of players move the weapon swap to the R3 stick, the right stick. Um, the only issue I have with that is when you map it to that for the Elder Scrolls Online, everything you play, the menu on PlayStation, whatever, that is what your controller is mapped to permanently until you turn it off. So I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, hopefully, PlayStation will come out with a back button for the PS5 or I may end up having to buy something later down the road that has a back button because it makes it a lot easier to bar swap not having to use that directional pad. But you do have that option in accessibilities to change your custom button settings. Or if Zoss would actually add a custom button setting option inside of the game, in the settings, like a lot of other games offer. I made a video talking about that a few days ago. If we had our own custom button, uh, custom button settings option here within the game, it would make things 10 times easier. You wouldn't have to buy a controller or anything like that. Vibration, I have this off. Personal preference, I don't like vibration on any game. When it comes to the general here, this is all personal preference as well. Anything you want to do here, you can. You can change you know, your mount speed. Uh, upgrades, you can see the upgrades for the speed, stamina, you know, your polymorph helmets, whatever. This is all personal preference. Now, this is one of the most important things right here, in my opinion, in the gameplay section, and this is combat cues. So you want to have this to own, and you want to have custom colors to own. You can change these colors to whatever you want. By default, they are not good in my opinion. So I use my friendly color as this bright blue with the brightness turned all the way down. So whenever friendlies have abilities out, it will look like this under my feet. And for enemies, this is red by default and it is absolutely awful. I set mine to pink. Turn your enemy brightness up as high as possible. So when an enemy puts, puts an ability down on the ground, it will look like that. So you will see these big bright circles wherever there's AOE damage. You'll know not to get into that. Uh, the red kind of blends in on some of the dirt, some of the ground, and, and some of the dungeons and trials. So I prefer to have mine pink and up as bright as possible. I recommend no matter what color you have this set to for enemy, have it turned up really, really bright. 
prevent attacking innocents. Now, all this is personal preference. This is set to own. If you want to kill innocents, if you want to you know, go out and use the blade of woe, you can turn that off. I, I just go in and switch it. If I'm doing something like that, I'll turn it off. But by default, I keep it on. Quick cast ground abilities. Now, this is set to automatic when you first start playing. So I slotted lightning flood here just kind of as an example. If this is set to automatic, if you're playing, you'll have to hit the button for your AOE and then you'll have to press it again to cast it. This kind of gives you an easy way to kind of move it around, as you can see. But personally for me, it kind of messes up a rotation because you have to double tap that button. So what I use is own. What it does when you have it set to own is just as soon as you hit that button, it casts that ability. You don't have to double tap it. Now, this may be a bit harder for some new players to kind of learn exactly you know, the distance you want to set this at because where you're looking is where this is going to go. So keep that in mind. Some players may want to leave it on automatic until they kind of learn the distances of these abilities and how far you can cast them. But I would highly recommend turning that to own once you get the hang of it. Uh, companion ultimate, call, uh, ultimate cast, that's personal preference. Everything down here is personal preference as well. Consolidate loot, I like to have that on. But if you do not have ESO Plus, you're going to have tons of items in your inventory. So you may want to adjust that. But everything else down here, once again, is personal preference. One that I really like is, um, or one I like to have turned on, is prevent stealing placed items. This is if you're not trying to steal anything and you walk by something and you hit it. If you're turning in your writs in the morning, uh, sometimes those writs will have boxes and, and baskets and things around and you'll accidentally hit one and you'll steal something. And of course, the guards will be after you. So I hit have this set to own. Um, now, if you are out stealing, out doing things, you may want to turn that off. But once again, I have that set to own, kind of like the killing innocence. I don't want to pick up something by accident if I'm not meaning to at that particular time. When it comes to camera, inverted. If you play inverted, you have that on. If you don't, if you're not, you play like me without being inverted, you'll have that off. Of course, assassination camera zone. Screen shake is turned all the way down. I don't really like the screen shake. It's not awful, but I don't like it at all. So I turn it down low as possible. Camera sensitivity is all the way up. This is your left and right sensitivity. Personally, it could be higher, but this is the only option we have, so I go high as I can go. First person FOB, uh, FOV, you want that all the way to the right, so it'll be as wide of a field of view as possible. You want the head bob off if you play in first person. Same goes for third. Third person FOV, all the way to the right, has the widest field of view. My horizontal offset and position, this kind of can show you exactly where your crosshairs are going to be set. I prefer to have my crosshairs set to where I'm looking. Some people may want to have that more to the left or right, but I prefer to have this to where I'm looking. So if I'm going to cast an ability attacking an enemy right in front of me, that is the direction my character is looking. So that is what that adjusts. Now, when it comes to the third person camera, if you play in third person, a little tip for some of you that may not know it, if you hold it down on the D-pad and press up or back, on the right thumbstick, you will actually be able to zoom the camera in and out. So some players want to know how I play back so so much of a wide view because I think by default it's kind of pushed up close. If you push your right thumbstick all the way in, you will actually go into first person. When you start edging it back, you'll see it getting wider and wider. Some people play up a little bit closer. I prefer to, like I said, hold down the D-pad, pull the right thumbstick all the way back towards you, and it will set that field of view back all the way. Now, do remember, you can be casting and playing and bump you know, the D-pad and the stick and it may adjust it. So make sure, you know, I always, when I'm playing, I always make sure mine's adjusted all the way back. Every time I log in or I'm playing, you know, I'll make sure I'm adjusting it back and forth to make sure it is back as far as possible. So you have that max field of view. When it comes to interface, uh, this, a lot of this is going to be personal preference, but I'll kind of show you what I use here. I prefer to use the online ID. The group reviver is automatic. All my stuff for quest trackers and compasses and weapon indicators is all set to own. Uh, your quick chat is on the fade rate as high as possible this will keep the chat up longer the lower you go the faster it will disappear um, for things like the chat bubble i have that turned off and i have it turned off for myself as well when it comes to name plates also something that is personal preference i have name plates on and titles set to own uh, show guild tabard now if you want to show your guild's name above your head this will put the tabard over your armor as well. The only way that you won't be able to show that tabard and you can still show the guild name is have a polymorph on. If you have that on, it won't actually show the tabard, but if you have this on, you'll kind of see, well, I don't think I actually have a guild tabard on this character, so forget what I was about to say, but I have that turned off. The only time I turn it on, like I said, is if I have a polymorph on some of my other characters, I may have it on so the guild name will actually show above my character's head. When it comes to displaying the name of your character overhead, I have that to never. I don't want to see my own character's name. Uh, group members, this will show the name of your group members. I have that to always. And you can kind of see what I do here. 
When it comes to friendly NPCs, I have this set to targeted. If you have this set to always, anytime you go anywhere, there's an NPC, you will see the name over their head automatically. Now, some people may like that, but it's a lot of clutter on the screen to me between players' names and NPCs' names. So I only turn these on to targeted. That way, when I look at that particular NPC, their name will actually pop up. Uh, friendly players, of course, things like that you want to have to always, but anything that has to do with NPCs, you want to have it to targeted or it'll say injured or targeted. That's just personal preference. You can turn them on to always, but it's just too much screen clutter for me. When it comes to health bars, of course, you want to have this on. And these health bars there in the nameplate section are going to be, let's run up here to my, some of the dummies here in the guild house uh, that I have. That way you can kind of see what I'm talking about. This is going to set those particular uh, things to have a health bar over their head if I can get close enough to actually show up. Um, there we go. So you can kind of see that, you know, health bar above that enemy and you kind of see the name and all that stuff. So that's what that's going to do. Now you can change exactly where that is, if it's centered or not. Uh, the damage taken indicator I have on, the frame border I have on, and for controls, the display of overhead health bar, I have that to never. I have my health bars and everything down at the bottom of the screen. I don't need to see the health bar over my character's head. When it comes to group members, of course, this is going to be on always, as you know, we talked about before, same for you know, NPCs, I'm going to go targeted or injured and targeted. We get down here to indicators for things like your alliance. I have that for, for enemy. For group members, this displays a group member icon above the players that you're in a group with. I have that to off. Um, of course, this is going to show where you can resurrect a player. Have that set on. This follower setting will be something that kind of is kind of, well, not really new because we've always had pets, but this, of course, is going to be an indicator for your pets, your companion, whatever the case may be. And you can change the glow of that kind of to your personal preference but you can see exactly what i'm using here when it comes to social now this is going to be kind of involving you know your text chat i have mine set to small you can turn this up to large whatever is easier for you to read my hud chat is usually always on i turn it off for a video or you know the chat would be over here with all the gills i'm in people would be talking so it'd be kind of distracting for you guys and covering up some other things so i have that to off profanity filter of course is going to be personal preference Leaderboard I have off. If you're in a lot of guilds, you'll be getting leaderboard notifications all the time, so I have those set to off. I also have auto decline duels on. If not, you're going to be asking people, or people are going to be asking you to duel all the time. If you like to duel, leave it off. If you don't like to duel, turn it on. Uh, the announcements are automatic, and when it comes to colors for you know your chat zone, say groups, uh, guilds, guild officer chat, uh, you can set those colors to whatever you prefer. Now, combat are some. These are some pretty important. Uh, things that you want to adjust as well when it comes to ability bars i have them on always show so that shows everything down here on the bottom it shows all of my abilities up all the time i also have my health bars stamina bars all those things turned on i want to see these all the time you can adjust those to only when in combat to have them off i prefer to have that up permanently ability bar timers are on and ability bar back row timers are on now this is something that is somewhat new to the game we used to not have this option so in the past, if I cast an ability, let's just cast an ability here on this, this dummy, uh, you'll see the ability bar down here on my wall show the countdown. If I swap bars, you will see that little small bar decreasing to let me know when that ability runs out. So once that ability is run out, I know to go back and cast it. In the past, we did not have timers on console, and it was really hard to keep a rotation up. But with all of this going on, now you can see exactly your timers on each side. So if I cast this on this side, I'll swap back. You can see the bar above that. So this way you can keep up with the rotation, knowing when you need to reapply everything. Now, when it comes to attribute bars, that of course is your health, stamina, magic. I have that turn on always. Resource numbers, that is going to be what is above the enemy's head. As you can see there where it says the target iron atro is 2.2 mil at 96% now. You can turn that to show just the number, just the percent, or both. I like to have both on. Also for combat, combat tips, I've never adjusted this. I just leave it on always show. Ultimate number is set to own. This will be your ultimate number over here. So you can see I'm at 75 of that, I think 300 or 200 or whatever it goes up to. I can't exactly remember, but you'll continue to add those ultimate points up over there. Once you use that ultimate, you start killing enemies again. You'll start to see that count up once more. So those numbers are on so you can know exactly how close you are to your ultimate. For combat techs, I have this on. Outgoing is on. Outgoing damage is on. Outgoing damage over time. All of these are set to on, except when it comes to pet. For my pet damage, pet healing, I have those off. So if you use a Sork, Necro, anything that involves pets, companions, any of that kind of stuff, 
you want those off, or you're going to see those numbers nonstop on your pets. Uh, when it comes to, like I said, outgoing though, for your particular character, this is going to show all of your damage numbers. So you're going to start to see those numbers tick off, just for example, off the enemy. There you go. So you start seeing those numbers start to pull off, and those are going to show you, you know, kind of how much damage you're doing. So that's why I have those on. When it comes to, like I said, pets, personally, I turn those off. Anything for incoming damage, I have that set to own for myself personally. Once again, for pets, I have that turned off. When it comes to buffs and debuffs, I have those to always show. My buffs are on. My self buffs are on. My self debuffs are on. Target debuffs are on. Target buffs and debuffs from others are on. Long effects are on. And permanent effects are off. So all of these buffs that you're going to see kind of, you know, down here at the bottom of the screen, uh, you know, above my health bar showing some of the buffs that are active. And you will see them actually under the Iron Atro's name. The more people that are in your groups, if you have a large group, that bar up there above the characters or below the character's name may fill up all the way across the screen. That's going to show everything that everyone in your group is doing to that enemy, all the debuffs and buffs that are on it. I like to have all this stuff up that way between, you know, the ability to see your timers on your bar and the ability to see all of the buffs and debuffs. It's a lot easier now on console to keep up with what's going on in combat, especially in trials and dungeons. And for permanent effects, I do have this off. Now, permanent effects for things like your ESO Plus, uh, things like your Mundestone, those are permanent effects. Those are things that are on your character all the time. They will show up down here on the bottom too above your health bar if you have that set to own. I prefer not to have that on. The only thing I really want to see uh, is with some of these other uh, uh, options like the long effect. So a long effect would be your food. A long effect would be a, a scroll. If you have it on, it will show that timer counting down to how long before that runs out. But like I said, a permanent effect is anything that's on your character permanently. So, I mean, most people probably don't want to see their Munda Stone and uh, their ESO Plus down there at all times. So, I prefer to turn that off and leave the rest of everything on. Anyway, guys, that is the best console settings. Like I said, some of these things, uh, personal preference-wise, you may want to change. But a lot of these things will help you out a lot, especially if you're a new player and you want to have better visuals on screen, better UI, that kind of thing. Hopefully this helped you out. Leave me a comment with your thoughts. And of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.